Well, I think, yeah, so we should go ahead and get going. And um, I don't know if you all know, and I guess you don't really, most of you know each other, but not all. So why don't you just do a quick introduction to who you are so everybody knows who's who. Yeah. I'm Michelle Montoy. I'm Michelle Montoy. I'm one of the to-do collaborators. I'm Anna O'Kane, and I just don't know Stacy, but I know everybody else. So Stacy, hi. <laughs> hi, I did see you on in one of the classes. Yeah, yeah, you look familiar. Yeah, but I just don't, <laughs> haven't met you formally. <laughs> yes, I'm Stacy, and I I am interested in the sound design. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh. Stacy did just just did a, is just finishing a great independent study with me about a really interesting uh, video about memory and sound. Cool. Yeah, I want to continue to research that. I'm up for it. Um, I'm Siobhan. I'm one of the th three to-do collaborators and happy to have you all here and have Christine sharing her sound experience with us. I think you're last, Clark. Um, I'm Clark. I, I thought I might was going to get help with my mending, but uh, maybe I... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe we'll do make a an appointment for you. <laughs> yeah, make an appointment. I have, I have jeans that need to be uh, upgraded for... Yeah. Um, I've attended... I, I, I'm aware of the mending project. You so. are. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Karen, did you say something? Hi, I'm Karen. <laughs> Hi, Karen. I think I know almost everybody, but I don't know everybody. Nice to meet you. I'm here to listen. And uh, I will also offer, as I did down in San Diego, a movement experience next week. What? <laughs> what did you just say, Karen? I will be offering a Feldenkrais lesson, a movement, oh, yeah, movement right. experience. Right, right, next right. Week. I thought you said hey. a roommate experience. <laughs> no. I'm turning that everybody for the uh, next. That's when we get out of this. We can do that in the next mending. Yeah. Okay, so um, most of you have attended some kind of sound walk that I've done. So, but I'll go ahead and make some introductory comments anyway, even if you've heard them before. It's always good to hear them again. And one of the reasons that I was interested in doing this is that um, there's just been a, a plethora, plethora of writing about what's happening now during COVID in our soundscape. And what's interesting about that, and I, I can share, I was going to try to share that with you in the chat, and I kind of made a mess of it, but I'll make certain that if you want those resources, we'll get them to you, or Siobhan will get them to you somehow. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, up until even just in, um, gosh, uh, end of January, there were, I'm looking at my, my resources here, there were a lot of um, articles about noise, actually, about how noisy our environment is and how damaging noise is both to human and non-human animals. So even, I was looking back through some of my resources, so even, you know, as recent as the end of January, <clears throat> there were articles that were like, um, the world is getting noisier and it's affecting our health. And what's interesting about that title is how much will people pay for quiet, right? And then following that are articles that are things like, um, human life is literally quiet, quieter due to the coronavirus lockdown, the wildlife sound expert on how the coronavirus has changed the world that we can hear. So. Um, so hi, you're new. Hi. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Oh. Hi, Juliana Goodman. Hi, Juliana. Thank you for joining us. I just started talking, okay? Okay, thank you for having this. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, I'm glad you're here. Um, so, um, so anyway, so anyway, I started thinking, I've been paying a lot of attention to sound. And if those of you who know me know that I do a lot of uh, listening experiences. 
And so for to do before I've done sound walks and, um, and of course, we're not going to do a sound walk today. You can walk, uh, but we're going to do just a listening exercise um, apart, you know, together apart, basically. So I'm going to just give you some introductory comments on, on thing on ways you can structure your listenings and then we'll just mute our mics and listen to our proximal environments that could be your office, it could be if you want to walk outside, um, it could be, you know, if you're on a balcony, it could be any place you want to go. And just listen, I'll just time it for about 10 minutes, maybe a little more. And then we'll come back together and share what we heard. And so one of the questions that I'm really interested in is, you know, how has your soundscape changed from, you know, pre-COVID to now? Um, I know mine has changed a lot. So when you're doing your listening, really think about, listen for that, right? I mean, first of all, listen to your sounds and then think about how it's changed. And then, and then another thing is, how do you want your world to sound in the future? And of course, people who are in the sound studies world are thinking a lot about this. And also thinking about the privilege of sound as well. So, you know, those of us that live in, in more suburban environments and less urban environments are going to have a different soundscape or those of us who have families, you know, maybe you've been living with your family in a small space, you know, we just don't, you know, we have all these different ways of, of having sound experiences during COVID in terms of our isolation. <clears throat> so for some people, it could be really soothing and peaceful. And so for some people, it could be really cacophonous and, and impossible. Um, so I'm really curious in that. And then projecting forward, how do you, you know, what kind of soundscape do we want in the future? And, and you know, what do we need to do to bring that about if there is anything? And I don't have an answer to that. So just to kind of, before we listen, just to give you a little bit of background about listening, um, I just thought I'd just bring up a few terms. One is acoustic ecology, and the other one is um, a soundscape ecology. And, um, and again, I can share resources on that, but acoustic ecology was a term that somebody named R. Marie Schaefer came up with. And it's basically uh, studying the interaction between human and non-human environments. Um, often in an urban environment, it could, it could be rural or it could be um, even more of a, a wilderness type environment. And so he started something with another woman, another woman Kate called uh, Hildegard Westerkamp. Um, and it was the World Soundscape Project and it started in the 1960s. And then the other person, and, and what, he, what he was doing was doing this thing called, he believes in this thing called sonological competence, which is about learning to hear the world and becoming aware of it, and then um, noting it, recording it, um, being able to form, formulate like a vocabulary around it. So like a level of, of sonic awareness, it's like a, like a deep listening experience. And then the other person is Bernie Krause, who's, who's been really in the news, I mean, on NPR a lot lately. And he's really interested in soundscape ecology, which really has to do with our non-human sound in natural environments. And he emphasizes, um, you know, how noise in particular has disturbed our natural environments. So in both of those studies, you know, that, that noise levels are, they are damaging to life human and non-human animals. And um, in particular with people, like if you live within a, a place that's got like 65 decibels, that's how we, that's how we measure the loudness of sound. Um, for prolonged periods of time, it can do things like create strokes and heart attacks. Um, they've also done studies where like children are, live, are studying in, classrooms next to freeways and they have like 75 percent less ability to learn um, or with animals in particular you know bernie Krauss talks a lot about if if there's a uh, flight path that's going over a natural environment and frogs for instance are quiet every time the you know a plane goes over they both they can't communicate so they can't reproduce um, but also one of the ways that frogs um, protect themselves is by kind of is, is sounding together. And so once one or two or five or 10 or 100 get quiet, 
it's really easy for predators like owls to swoop in and, and decimate the, um, the frog population. The other thing that Bernie Krauss did was he studied um, a, a meadow where he, that he was very familiar with and he it was being uh, selectively cut and so he wanted to study the biodiversity of the meadow through sound. And so after the selective cutting, the before and after the pictures were just almost identical and they said you're not going to notice the difference, but the biodiversity fell off like a lot. So the number of bird species, for instance, really disappeared after the cutting. So he does a lot of things with that. You know, if you're ever interested in your own sound environment, there's decibel readers. To, uh, and so I have one here and I'm in a really quiet place like right now. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is my reading. This is me my reading talking, right? Um, so you can see that normal human speech, and I'm talking a little bit loud, is in the 60s range. But when I'm really quiet, this is what it is. So that's half of you know what I was talking about that can be damaging. So sound can be quite damaging to our health, more than what you think. It's not just like a loud sound of a plane or a loud sound of a leaf blower, but any continuous loud sound can be quite damaging. So, um, and stop me to ask you any questions that you wanna ask. So, and you can just download a dB meter to your phone if you're ever interested, like, what is it, you know, how loud is it, what you're hearing, your, your HVAC, for instance. Yeah. Oh, you're muted, Anna. What is an audiometer? Audiometer? Yeah, do you know what that is? No. Mm -mm. It's to test people's hear, ear, hear, hearing. Okay, I'll check into it. I'll look it up. Yeah. <laughs> is it something that is used in the... Speech in therapy? The, in therapy, yeah. In, in Your mom did speech therapy, so mm -hmm. did she use an audiometer? Yeah, she yeah. tested my hippie friends who were in bands. Oh, yeah. Time because she could detect hearing loss at 16 years old, 17 years old. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, people um, in bands have terrible hearing loss, and the other profession is in the, is in the, the military because the gun is so close to your head, and it's just you're blasting yourself all the time. So um, I was reading a book on hearing loss. It was really interesting, actually. <clears throat> so just to give you, then we'll look, then we'll go listen. Just to give you like a little bit of a, a maybe a um, like tools and taxonomy taxonomies for li for listening, um, so that you know what to listen for. I'll just give you some some ideas, terms, and concepts, and then we'll go listen. So um, one of the ways. When I do a sound walk, it's really different than us just sitting, but I still think you can employ this a little bit, is that we think of the body itself as the listener and that um, the body is both doing the listening and the sound making. So when you're walking, you're definitely, you know, um, changing the acoustic environment that you're in, how many bodies are there, how much sound is being reflected or absorbed, but also your own footsteps, your own rustling of your clothes. In this case, you might you can walk around for ten minutes and listen, or you can you know just lay quietly or sit in your studio or whatever you want. But um, but when we think of it that way, there's three things that you might want to think of. One is the physical aspects of sound, like the actual mechanics of listening, and um, those are going to be you know having to do with how the ear works, but they also have to do with like geography, climate, the surfaces that we're in. All of those things change the physical. Uh, qualities of sound. So a hard surface will make, will amplify sound and make it brighter, whereas a, a soft <clears throat> place with like a lot of like fabrics or curtains or carpets will, will absorb the sound and make it um, quite a bit softer and take off a lot of the high frequencies as well. The other one you might want to think about is the cognitive aspect, and that's like how do we analyze sound? What does it mean? How do we interpret it? Um, and then the other one, of course, is the affective, like how do we feel about the sounds that we have around us? So I'm just giving you these ideas so you can kind of maybe go shift between them as you're, as you're listening. So I have a, a wind chime out back that I like. Definitely it's a high end, high frequency sound that is um, because of the shape of my backyard and my, and my buildings is sort of amplified and sent into my house so I can hear it. So that has to do with the physical aspects. 
but it's the wind chimes of a friend who died. And so there's an affective quality to it, you know, it reminds me of her and there's a kind of sadness that comes with that sound. Um, the other thing that Armory Schaefer talked about with this, with this like taxonomy of sounds, he was the one who, you know, started acoustic ecology, is um, there's three different like types of sound layers. And you might find this depending on where you are today. One is called a keynote. And that's like background sounds. So it could be the sound of a distant freeway. It could be the sound of an ocean. It could be the sound of an HVAC. Um, it could be the sound of your humming refrigerator or whatever. This kind of keynote sound, which has to do with like the keynote in music. It's, it's you know, the, uh, it's the note that sets, you know, the musical um, uh, harmony or whatever you call it. Then there's signal sounds and those are like foreground sounds. So those can be speech, sirens, bells, things like that. Um, things that like, it's like foreground and background, like in painting too, you know, there's like, <clears throat> you need a background sound to, to hear the foreground sound usually. And then the last one is like a sound mark and those are community sounds. So when you're listening, especially if you're listening outside, you hear a sound that's particular to that community, either a bell, like in my neighborhood, there's a monastery, so I hear their bells a lot. Um, and then finally, another way you could think of it too is this is from Michel Chillon, who's a French sound theorist, is the three different listening modes. And so this is so always kind of fun to do when you're listening, you can shift between these modes. And one is semantic. So for instance, listening to my voice now, you're probably using your semantic listening mode, which is the mode of decoding, right? You're, you're listening to the meaning of what I'm, what I'm saying. Um, but then there's the causal, there's semantic causal and reduce. So causal is like what, what's making that sound. And we do that a lot. Like if something were to fall behind you, you turn to look because you want to know like, what was that? Or if there's some squeaky sound, you don't know where it's coming from. <clears throat> You're like, what is making that sound? So there's causal listening, um, you know, which you could do, <clears throat> you know, through like listening to my voice. You could say, well, what's causing her, her voice to sound that way? Why is it, you know, gravelly, for instance? Why does it sound a little hoarse? Um, you know, why is she clearing her throat? That's all causal. And then there's reduced listening, which is just listening to the sounds in and of themselves. And that's one of the hardest things to do because you're listening to sound qualities. So you could, like right now, you could be listening to my voice <coughs> and, um, and trying to like take the, take the semantic off of it and just listen to the quality of it like is it melodic is it is it does it shift in pitch is it um monotone you know is it scratchy is it high pitched all of those kinds of things have to do with um with the quality of the sound in reduced sound often we call those things timbre so those are like tangible descriptions and often they have to do like timbre we often use visual or textural words to talk about the quality of sound, like it's scratchy or it's mellow or it's smooth or it's harsh or it's bright or it's, you know, low or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, lastly, the one thing that people don't talk about very much is the idea of the socio-political aspects of sound um, and that different, ex different listening experiences and different uh, sound making experiences have, you know, socio-political and racial, you know, uh, uh, content to them. So there's a woman, she wrote a book called The Sonic Color Line, Jennifer Stover, who's really well known. So she's really talking about, you know, what is the difference between a white listening experience and a person of color? Or, um, you know, how do we interpret those sounds? So for instance, what kind of sounds are made? So for instance, she uses um, the example of in 2012 when um, Jordan Davis was a young teenage African-American um, who was with his kids, with his friends in his car, and they came up to a gas station. And they were playing their music, <clears throat> their rap music, really loud. And um, uh, Michael Dunn, who is a 45-year-old white person, objected, and they didn't turn the music down, so Michael Dunn shot um, Jordan Davis for having played that music in that, at that level. And, he, you know, of course, um, you know, he was a young black kid. The other example she uses is, I don't know if you remember, there was like the wine train and, you know, this African-American group of women were on the wine train. It was a wine tasting 
and they and they were deemed to be too loud and noisy and they were kicked off the wine train they were escorted off the wine train for being too loud so she has a lot of really interesting examples of that in her book okay so given all of that do you have any like I thought we could listen, like just now a lawnmower started outside, which is going to be really interesting for me because I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> um, so any, um, do you have any like questions before we go? I do. Yeah. What was the name again of the man that, with the acoustic ecology? Oh, that's R. Murray Schaefer. It's acoustic, R period, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y Schaefer. And then um, Bernie Krause, C-R-A-U-S-E is his name. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so I think it would be really fun and interesting. And if we went, I'm gonna time it and like just take, what I'd love to have you do, just take 10 minutes. You can stay where you're at. You can keep your camera on if you want. If you're gonna stay here, just, just, mic, just mute yourself so that people don't hear your sound. Um, or you can go outside or you can go in another room or lay down on your bed or whatever you want to do and then and listen and try to really you know capture like what are you listening to how does it make you feel what is the quality and think about pre and post isolation if there's a difference for you um, like what is the actual sound and how does it sound different now than it did before and then we'll come back and share okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and 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 um, so this is like a chance for you just to meditate. Just just don't do anything. Don't be looking at your computers or your phones. Just close your eyes and absorb you know the sound. Around. Even if it's really quiet, like even if you're in your studio and it's all closed up and there's no sound, just listen to that. Okay, and um, it'll be about ten minutes. So if you want to look at your own. Um, your own, you know, uh, watch or phone or whatever it is, that's fine. But I'll come back at, um, I'm going to go outside. I'll come back at um, 4.05. Okay? You'll be there when I come back? Okay. I'm going to experience. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I wanted more. I don't know how everybody else felt. Yeah, maybe we should do that again a little bit longer. <laughs> I, I was going to do it 15 or 20 minutes, and then I got I got insecure about it. I thought, oh, nobody's going to be off. No, I think 20 minutes is good. 20 minutes would have been better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was out there. I was going, oh, this is really, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to go in my backyard, so I went in the front yard, and I yeah. wanted to see the difference. Oh, you did, but you didn't get there. I didn't get to the backyard. <laughs> Yeah, that was too short. I, I'm totally with you on that one. I, I shouldn't have second guessed myself. But anyway, it's it's the beginning of your of your own listening experiences. But Stacy, do you want to talk about what you heard? Sure. I, I would say that Clark was napping. <laughs> uh, the the keynote sound, I would say, was my air conditioner humming, because I could hear everything else over that, but it was always in the background. Because where I live, it's hot, so. Uh -huh. Usually the air conditioner is on, but I did still hear quite a few birds and I could hear like the leaves rustling in the trees and only one car that drove by, but I could hear like a light traffic in the distance mm -hmm. and a little bit of hammering and inside the house I heard um, my son and my husband talking about cars. <laughs> Dog snoring. <laughs> yeah, cars. <laughs> All right. Yeah, maybe we could just uh, talk about what we heard and the environments that we were in, and then we can talk about like, or Stacy, do you want to talk about like anything like how it made you feel or? You know. Well, I feel like basically it was pretty quiet. The um. Did you say the decimal level? Is that what it's called? Was probably 30 to 35. Pretty low. Yeah. It was kind of nice. It was quiet and peaceful. Who's that? Is that them talking about? Is that your husband? Yeah, you can still. <laughs> well, now it's like car buying time because he sold the car. <laughs> you know what, Stacy? Um, 
it was really like a huge event in my backyard right now. I mean, I sat down <laughs> on the couch and leaned against the back of the chair and just went, oh my God, I don't even know how to do it. I mean, there were keynotes. I got the background sounds, but there's cars and I'm kind of jealous of your quiet 35 oh, decibel level. You I can was, have quiet here, but you're going to be hot. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. Dogs barking and birds scaring me made me jump at one point because they're right above my shoulder and they just were flying all around and having such a good time. Were you inside or outside? I went outside in the concrete yeah. patio area and just sat in the shade for 10 minutes. Did you hear any specific kind of bird? These were... <laughs> There's cr there's crows and they ma they make their ca 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 kind of sound and then there were little tweeter birds right behind me. There's a lot of birds in my neighborhood anyway. So because I heard a dove. No no doves today. I, I we have doves, but I didn't hear any doves. It's mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be here later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you know that your back area is that? No, maybe? I didn't. No, I haven't. I I. I've been working in the yard a lot and gardening, but I have an activity where I guess it's my body making all the sound, you know, and mm -hmm. then the birds seem so much louder ever since we've all been, you know. You know, it's interesting that they, they're in the writing that people are doing about it is that the birds are in fact not louder. Like yeah. The birds aren't vocalizing any louder because they don't have to. Like in a noisy environment, they have to vocalize really loud in order to communicate. But because everything is so much quieter, people are saying the birds are louder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I wonder if it's that time of day. I'm talking to Anna, that is mm -hmm. louder for you in the backyard. Maybe if you went out in the morning, it's different. There, I did a drawing just to like, in response to it. So there's a lot, yeah. a lot more contrast on the backside when things got crazier and crazier, or maybe I was just hearing more and more, I don't know. But then, the, then there was the umbrellas kind of flapping, you know, so it was a lot of different <laughs> kinds of things in the backyard, stuff rolling around. <laughs> it's a little messy out there right now, you know. <laughs> Can you hold your drawing up to the camera? Can oh, yeah. This is, this, is, this is the first drawing. Can you see it? Yeah. Nice. And, and there were a lot of key, there were a lot of the, the um, keynotes in the background of that one. And then this one got really crazy just on the back side of it where I, I got more and more sensitive, you know, and suddenly yeah. I'm like, whoa, this is like a big giant symphonic event back here, you know? I couldn't, <laughs> it was not calming at all. I was like, oh, oh, in the middle of dramatic symphonic sound. <laughs> I think I'll do, do a have, drawing. Do you have a lot of neighborhood sounds, like neighbors yeah, doing yeah, things? people watering, people scraping something, right. a couple of pool sounds. Uh, uh, the guy across the street, you can barely hear Rush Limbaugh way in the background. And I, the only reason I know it's Rush is because that's all he listens to, so I kind of know the rhythm, the patterns, and uh -huh. it's over there. It's like just this it is a lot. radio stuff kind of happening down the street. There's what you know the water in the back, the pool makes amplifies things. I think it could. Mm -hmm. Also, all that concrete, the way you're sitting, it could be amplified in that concrete area. Yeah. Anybody else want to share their audit, their sonological experience? Um, I spent half my time inside in here, and then I walked outside for five minutes. And um, when I was inside, I have ringing in my ears, and I. It was really starting to get to me. It was like, I can't even hear because I'm hearing myself. That was a tough one. And then when I go outside, I don't hear the ringing in my ears as much because I'm listening to other things. Um, but I have noticed over the course of this quarantine time, it's getting louder every day. Um, I'm hearing more and more. It was so quiet here at the beginning because I live, you know, on streets and near the five and all that. And you know, I can tell things are picking up. It's just a really, and it's by sound that I can tell that because I'm still, in, you know, just in my yard. Mm -hmm. Does that, how does that, um, you know, that's kind of goes to the question of what do we want our futures to sound like? And um, 
you know, do we have the means to even um, create that world, right? I know, I almost always feel a victim of sound. Mm -hmm. it, I have no control, you know, I live close oh. to Pendleton. Yeah. You know, I hear the bombs go off and it, it just hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, a plane, you know, all sorts of those sounds. I love, many of them are lovely, the birds and rustling trees and all that. I don't want to say it's all negative, but, um, but I have no feeling of agency with the sound around me. So you have helicopters too, huh? Yeah. Mostly the mechanical sounds you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, but even the birds, I mean, I guess I can create, I have a garden that, you know, I'm nurturing bird nests and things. So I guess I do have some, but maybe between my ringing ears and all the things in the sky and stuff, maybe I'm just a little irritated. Yeah, no, people, sound sensitivity is a, is a thing. Mm. You know, people, I mean, I have sound sensitivity and it is a thing. And, you know, they, some of the, the, the things that I've been reading is that mechanical sounds are more wearing on us just because of the quality of the sound itself, the physics, as opposed to natural sounds. I threw away a vacuum cleaner because I could not stand the way it sounded. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's great. I mean, took great. it to the thrift right. store, could not handle it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm also hearing the sounds growing in my neighborhood a little bit, a little bit more freeway. Mm -hmm. I, I've been hearing a lot. I mean, I'll, I won't talk. I'll talk about my sound experience in a minute, but I want to hear from other people what you heard. Oh, you're uh, muted, Clark. Okay, I'll talk. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't live too far from Christine, so. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Yep. <laughs> um, but I live, I feel like I live uh, fairly close to the 805 and normally it is just a constant hum of the freeway no sound, that kind of kind of sound. And that is not happening at all right now. Spot, um, are you needing to go pee? And then also, the um, sound of helicopters. <laughs> There's hardly any of that anymore, and there usually is a lot. I just, I feel like it's this is like a very no noisy place mm -hmm. in North Park. But um, so it was. It's much quieter. I really enjoy that. Um, but I did get. I was nerdy and I got the decibel app and then I was like watching what the spikes were <laughs> what did you see and um so I, I saw like for instance the a lot of chirping birds you know and that was like around like mid 40s sometimes when they got really loud almost to 50 and then the loudest sound was my dog barking at 77 whoa yeah i didn't realize how loud well, he's a big dog so <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize you know i mean i know he, his barking the noise that there goes my dog but yeah so um but i do notice also what michelle is saying like sounds are picking up it's still definitely not what it was mm -hmm. but it's a little bit of a sad feeling to know that maybe these memories might just go away. I don't know. You know what I mean? That's why we have to make note of it, right? Right. Uh -huh. I remember during the, do you guys live here when the, all the power went out in the whole county? And it was totally dark. Anybody else remember that? Yeah, yeah it was like 11. 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. it was like. Yeah. And it was crazy how quiet it was also when you walked outside. Yeah. Yeah, but I, it's just a story now. I can't remember it really. It's just, I remember this. There's a, um, one of the things I can share with you, there's a worldwide um, uh, site where people are being asked to contribute their audio from their environments. Um, and they're doing it in part to make a data set so that then it can be studied later about how the sound changed over the time of this particular pandemic. And I can share yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. I've been recording. I, I would a, say, oh, never mind. Clark? Oh, I, I have an interesting comment about 
about whether the birds res are responding to the background noise or if they're responding or if it's just that we hear them better. And, and my just anecdote is about, there was that eclipse about, I think it was eight years ago. And um, walking during the eclipse, you know, it got, it got cooler and, um, you know, darker. And the bird song, you know, increased notably because they were fooled. But there, it's not the background audio that was affecting, but it was their own sort of behavior. They were like saying, oh, it's getting twilight. It's time, time to chirp. So uh, that's just an interesting uh, sideline anecdote. My, it, my sound environment here is interesting because I'm in a room with doors open on either side. And, one, and the one on the street side is propped, has a, has a door stop. But it opens and closes, and it kind of creaks as it opens and closes with the wind. But it also allows audio in, or it kind of mutes it a little bit, and then forces it over to the further away door, which is open. And so <laughs> it was kind of like the wind was creating um, a sonic environment for me by like choosing to open, you know, I would hear cars a little more, or I'd hear birds more if it closed so that was kind of interesting i also heard the house the, the building <coughs> make a couple of sharp noises which you could hear it creaking yeah now do you did you find there was more uh noise on one side or the other of your house well on one side there's cars so but they're intermittent so um so as the car volume went down then you might hear sound from the other That's side fine. come up Mm -hmm. But or if the door closes, you might hear more sound coming up. So it was kind of like a constantly, you know, varying experience. Modulating. Mm -hmm. Karen, are you there? I'm here. Didn't, did you hear that plane? I didn't. Oh, I was like, oh, that must be so loud for these, this <laughs> conversation. Uh, the experience made me so sleepy. <laughs> So I'm lying on the floor in a sunbeam listening. So I'm going to go back to my inner space to talk. But um, it was a great experience because I, I'm aware of it, but I got extra aware of the word listen because listen, even though I sense with my body, I listen. So I kind of was like that word is conjoined for me with the sonic and the somatic experience. So that was interesting to just note as soon as I reclined. That was really interesting to modulate like what I was going to tune into. Like, so as soon as I listen, I feel my body first. So that was really interesting. Did you, um, did you find that depending on how you're, I don't know if you shifted your body, depending on how you were laying on the floor, that the quality of the sound changed? Well, this is like a delightful break. So I like put my legs up on the wall and straddle, <laughs> just like stretched, but stayed really still. And then, you know, it was just so beautiful to have the this break to just say this is, I'm just going to listen now and it was mm -hmm. like a nice assignment mm -hmm. for myself um, to shift maybe even from the physical sensations to a sonic sensation so that was cool um, and then um, just feel like I should be personal since everybody's being seen um, and then uh, I got really into how much my neighborhood kind of hasn't changed that much. Um, the only thing that's changed is that because of COVID, I've had a chance um, with my husband to do some gardening and planting. So there's more, there's bees and birds coming to the home. And that's been really cool. So it was like a nice hum of bees and a great experience of a hummingbird was really cool uh, but there is some um, there was a plane so there's been, there was like three planes since we've begun and I'm like oh that plane, plane is loud but I've already noticed that but I don't 
There had, and then there were some children. So you don't usually hear children this time of day. Mm -hmm. So I noticed the children. Um, but I feel very less cars, but I, I feel the gift of the quiet, but I also realize that I live in a very quiet environment than I ever did up until this time in my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm very aware of the quiet where I live. It's like super quiet. Mm -hmm. That was a great experience. So yeah, we a longer it was like amazing how restful it was. Thank well, you. I think it, one thing is I, I laid down on my, um, on my, well, first I watered <laughs> and I, and I got, I was watering my garden and then I noticed like, like, oh, I, oh my, it sounds like this on the plants and this on the tree and this on the leaves and this on the bench. And so I was, and then I did the bird bath. So I was playing with the sound of the water and all these different surfaces. And then I laid down on concrete with the concrete wall next to me. And I also heard my tinnitus super loud and it's been really loud and i think it's either mine is either created through stress so like there's an underlying even though yeah there's this underlying stress all the time right and so my tinnitus is really loud um but then everything seemed amplified like i heard the bee up inside the flower i heard the water dripping i heard the cars going by the highway in the distance also, Siobhan, I could hear that. And so there was this like undercurrent of, um, of like distant activity that was um, felt separate from me, um, like, like going on without me. And then all these little close up, um, like foreground sounds that were connected to me. And so for me, as like a sound designer and a sound studies person I got really interested in you know the the world the unseen but active world and then my private world and, and then of course my tinnitus world as well where I try to distract myself by listening to things but I'm interested in that that um, that sense of nostalgia that I think I'm hearing people say too is that you know, we're in a time that's, that's a, you know, a very critical moment. And, um, and, you know, while we can, and, oh, the other thing is I live on the edge of the flight path. And so there was not one plane and maybe I get one or two planes in a day now. Like it used, to, like, I think before it was like every 10 minutes. So that's from the airport, the international airport. I, you know, when I hear a plane now, I look up at it. I, I'm like, oh, there's a plane you now. Um, and you must have that too, Siobhan. You must have planes. Exactly, exactly the same. I yeah. mean, there's usually just constant air constant, planes. Airplanes. Constant. Yeah, and they're gone. And so I like the fact that they're gone, but that also means, you know, that, you know, that the world has come to this halt and that you know, those are, as much as I love the silence, it's an indication to me of um, suffering as well. So I think from my experience, I was aware that there was like a continuation in the world that included people trying to make a living, people trying to survive. And then I had my private world of sound. And so, so that idea of like nostalgia, like how, like how do you move from this beautiful space of silence and peacefulness that's really not like internally peaceful and I think you were saying that, Michelle, as the sound starts to build, you're, you're knowing it's, it is coming back, right? And what is, yeah, what is it? So. Yeah. And why is it so ominous? The feeling of it coming back. Yeah, as opposed to comforting. Do you know, do you have any feelings about that? Is this just the unknown that we're facing? I mean, am I turning sound into, you know, the emotions that I'm having about what is going, what is next in this? When is it safe? You know, what, how's it going to work? Mm -hmm. I could be just connecting those two things. But I think also that sense of the way that everything has slowed, you know, everything has slowed down. And there's also this feeling of all this incredible goodness that's coming out of 
being quiet and being slow and not, you know, this kind of harried, continuous. Yeah, I like that peacefulness. Yeah. And so that for me, I feel like, oh no, we're going to head back to that. But I, at the same time, what Christine said, which is like, yeah, all these people are out of work and people are sick and it's, so it's really, there's no one single, you know, lens to look at it through. Um, I forgot to mention um, about how it changed here since the pandemic. And I would say it's quieter and there, there used to be parties on my street that I could hear and they're, they're not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And probably more kids playing outside in the streets, which I don't hear so much anymore. Oh, the kids aren't playing outside anymore. Not as much. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, I would say it's more quiet. Mm -hmm. Can I make a reflection on my sound experience that ties into mending? And this is, this is it. That one thing I noticed is as, you know, as my door was opening and closing and the, 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 dry, the car sounds increased or died down, and then I would suddenly hear the birds, and then I'm thinking, am I hearing the birds because I'm not hearing other sounds or am I hearing the birds, you know, why, why are they there? And I thought, I'm thinking now, like, what if it's like, kind of like a patchwork quilt, right? Or maybe even is the right term applique where you have layers of fabric and mm -hmm. suddenly the ones where it's like the densest, the thickest fabric is on top. And so that's what you see. But if you cut out that piece, and it's no longer there, then there's a layer of fabric that's underneath. And so that's what I'm thinking of the sound environment as, is that there's these multiple um, events, some of which are constant and some of which are, uh, you know, pop up, but that they're kind of stitched together or revealed as different layers um, uh, happen, as, as different layers are uncovered or, you know, reappear. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the, the layers of being uncovered as part of the listening experience or par part, like, is that an internal listening experience or is that because of the way in which the sound is organized in your environment? Or it's both, I guess, but. Probably, it's probably both. I mean, I think it's certainly like if there's no, if, if a car's not going by, then there's room to, you know, hear the birds that may be there the whole time. Right. Um, yeah, that's a great analogy. But then, I love but then that. Then I might be like also just perceive, you know, it might be where where am I focusing my attention? Am I doing it like Karen and like focusing my body first and then the environment outside? Or is it that I'm hearing the birds and following that and then suddenly something else, some shiny object takes my attention and uh, I like that idea of layers also. It's very interesting. Which kind of ties to sound frequencies. Right, Christine? The, yeah. All the layers of frequencies that mm -hmm. I'm losing at the top end. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, something else is getting replaced there, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. So you're, you're, you know, what's interesting about tinnitus, it can be a, an actual, um, you know, physical uh, damaging, damage of the ear, but it can also be neurological and have nothing to do with physical damage. It can be the brain filling in the high end frequencies. Yeah. <laughs> Is that in both your ears or just one? Mine's just in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's the weirdest thing in the world. It's a sound that's not made by sound. <clears throat> yeah, it could happen to any of us. Siobhan, you're, um, you're muted. I was, I was pre pressing the space bar, but it wasn't working. <laughs> I, I just, what, what Clark said also made me think about listening to an orchestra and you're, it's almost like you can pick out the different parts mm -hmm. of the orchestra. You can change your focus towards, you know, the woodwinds or towards the brass section or the timpani. You can kind of selectively jump around and mm -hmm. that kind of layering as well. I, I, don't, I don't have any like uh, concluding remarks other than that I think it's really important that you know that, that people take the time and do this kind of listening. I, th I think that we're a visual culture 
and we spend a lot of time on, um, you know, the, um, the uh, you know, what we see, you know, I mean, you know, the term seeing is believing was coined in the age of reason, right? When, um, you know, when, when what, what would be visible is what, we, you know, what would be believable, right? That's how we prove things to be. You know, and up, and up until that time, it was also the time when, you know, we began to light our environment, right? Artificially light the environment. So our ability to hear and listen and process what we hear, and even the terms and the concepts that we can use to describe what we hear, I think we've lost a lot of that. Um, so that's why I love doing these. I think it is like meditative, but it also brings that other physical awareness, you know, to, um, sensate awareness to our experience and and i'd be really interested if uh you know if you had any more thoughts you know in the, not at the moment but going forward about that you know what we identified as that kind of nostalgia for the quiet of the of this moment that's starting to pass you know and it, it feels odd because you know when i first started listening with people in sound studies worldwide and I was involved in that at the beginning of the pandemic, people were recording and broadcasting these incredibly quiet environments in, in a way that felt more prison-like, like I can't go out and everything's quiet. Mm -hmm. And then I, it's almost like we've adjusted and now it's like a relief that it's quiet, but now it's come, now the world is coming back and, um, and there's a kind of anxiety around the world, the world coming back. Well, at the same time, that means that you know, we're getting it, we're getting, maybe we're getting this under control. And, you know, I don't live in a city, I don't live in an apartment with, you know, 10 people in my room, right? I live in a house with all this space. So, um, yeah, so there's also the sociopolitical aspect of that, you know, about what does it mean to have the privilege of quiet, right? Uh, so anyway, yeah. Great. any other comments? <laughs> Oh, I, I just enjoyed it. I loved listening. Yeah. I just wanted to say one thing that I learned since you taught me to listen was um, I used to never be able to get a parking spot when I was at the campus. And ever since you taught me that, I'd drive around slowly and I'd listen for someone's keys to beep oh. and I'd find a parking spot. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's really great. They're like, oh, I heard wow. that one. <laughs> That's really <laughs> That's great. Yeah, instead of visually trying to find one, you're like listening for it, right? Yeah. Good. And it worked. <laughs> That's cool. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> All right. Um, so if anybody's interested, I'll try to get my resources. I have a, like a half a dozen really interesting articles about noise in the world and about silence in the world. Yeah. And I like the, the website for you, know, you could give your sounds to? Yeah. There's because one I've the been recording. Concept. You've been recording. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. It's called, um, I, I have a link to it, but it's called, um, I wrote it down, but I don't remember where I put it now. Um, but you can I'll, send it to I'll, me I'll, later. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's a site that it's talked about in one of the articles. I just recently was listening to a podcast that was the guy uh, Kraus. Uh huh. Was it on On Being? I, I forget, but it was really yeah. Good. No, it was on. Um, so there was two things he was on recently. It was NPR, the Hidden Brain. One is called Invisibilia. Oh, that's where I listened to it. Yeah, and the other one was just an NPR podcast. So I have links to those. But, yeah, the invisibility was one was really good if you listen to it with headphones yeah. because the recordings are so lush, right? It did. Um, it was yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. great. And sad, too. Yeah. Yes, and sad. Yeah, it's a beautiful. You know, he lost his whole, he's recorded, um, you know, sounds of, of uh, the wild for 50 years and he lost them all in the fire. Right. Mm -hmm. um, up the up, you know, north of here. Marin. Yeah, yeah. That's a good reason to donate your sounds. Really? Yeah, he recorded. He had digital copies, but all of his original analog equipment, all of it, got destroyed in the fire. And he mm -hmm. talks about climate change. You know, the the effects of climate change on the biodiversity. And then he was almost killed in the fire, actually. Wow. Okay, so how, Siobhan, how do I get those 
how do I get, can I just send you my notes? You can I mean, send I have them all in notes. notes. Yeah, okay. just send me them and, okay. and I will just put them on a screenshot and then I can okay. add them to the recording okay. of this. So all of this is being recorded, right? Being, and, and yes. Okay. And we are posting on YouTube. So, but I did pause the recording during our, our moment of getting away so that we didn't have 10 minutes of silence. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but I know, it, I, maybe I should have left it. I don't know. I don't know. People could go sit in there 10 minutes. I know they could, or I, we could just say, Pause at this at, point in the recording. At 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> at 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for your generosity. Yeah, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Wonderful. Thanks yeah. So much. It was great to do it together. Anybody, anytime anybody wants to listen together, just let me know. That sounds great. Okay. Maybe with cocktails next time. Okay. <laughs> Virtual cocktails. Think of glasses, right? <laughs>